Do you want to play Monster Hunter, but not Monster Hunter? Yeah, it happens to the best of us. That's why I wanted to make this video about a game called Deep Rock Galactic, which in my opinion, has a really similar gameplay loop to Monster Hunter. It gives me all the same feelings. Excitement, unity, friendship, rage, fear. Yeah, this and this have a lot more in common than you might think. And if you like Monster Hunter, then you should definitely try out Deep Rock. Deep Rock Galactic is a cooperative first-person game where four dwarves are tasked with finishing a job for their employer. Being dwarves, it's only natural that this involves lots of digging and collecting ore. In reality, there's a lot more to it than that, though, including finding alien eggs, fixing robots, destroying large monsters, pumping oil, and even escorting vehicles across dangerous subterrain. As a player, you can pick between four classes. There's the Driller, which is adept at that drilling holes and burning aliens. The Gunner, who starts with a Gatling gun and can throw zip lines for the team. The Scout, who has a flare gun and a grappling hook and is great for getting into hard to reach places. And the Engineer, who could shoot platforms and build turrets. When you're dropped off on an alien planet, every player needs to work together to succeed in a mission. It's not easy, especially when you're attacked by waves of indigenous aliens. Now you might be able to tell where I'm sort of going with this, and especially with the cooperation aspect. In Monster Hunter, one of my favorite aspects is working with others to finish the quest, whether that be gathering 10 coal, killing an ice dragon, or running away from angry herbivores. In some hunts, you'll have different builds, some people go for the highest burst damage, whereas others may go for like a more prolonged DPS, or even they just might use their favorite weapon because that's what they want to do. There's so many valid ways to play the game with all the equipment and different tools that you can use to help out your team, like conning horns, light powders, wide range. It's a really organic gameplay where the player has the agency to do what they want, and I'm sure that's one of the reasons why Monster Hunter is so popular. Compare that with Deep Rock. All of the classes in Deep Rock are essential in common situations. There's never a mission where you'd go, oh, well, you know, I don't think we really need an engineer or a scout. I mean, sure, you could technically complete the level with four gunners, but it's far more efficient and way more satisfying and fun to have your own responsibilities. I typically run as a gunner or a scout, so my job as a gunner usually amounts to exterminate and throwing zip lines. As a scout, my role typically involves, well, scouting for minerals while shooting flares to make sure the team can see. The classes and skills are designed to work together. For example, if there's a rare ore in a high corner of a cavern, you could ask your engineer friend to shoot a platform under it, then the scout can use his grappling hook to boost up and collect it. If there's a swarm of angry bugs and one of your dwarves is down, the gunner can throw up a shield and resuscitate the wounded dwarf. At the end of a mission, when everybody is panicking and worrying about how to get back to the ship, the driller can actually just drill a tunnel right to it if it's nearby while the rest of the team helps defend from the bugs. There are so many examples of this, and it feels good knowing that you helped your team. Of course, this wouldn't be possible if there wasn't an extensive progression system within Deep Rock. Before each mission, your dwarf is given free reign of the Space Rig, a sort of hub where you can chat with your teammates, you can run around, drink, dance, change equipment, you know, that sort of thing. The Space Rig is really cool because there's lots of little Easter eggs and achievements in here. There's this hoop game that I've spent entirely too much time on. There's barrels all over the place that you can kick into the launch pod. There's unlockable beer that gives you fun effects. And there's even a jukebox with music that you can dance to. As you level up each dwarf, you'll unlock equipment and modifiers to customize your gear. A lot of these modifiers make small changes to ammo capacity or damage that help you with a certain playstyle. If you're constantly running out of ammo for your weapons, you can change your gear to carry more. Or you can focus on damage and give your weapon flaming bullets or larger explosions or something like that. For example, my scout's equipment allows him to carry more minerals and reduce the grappling hook charge time. This makes it easier for me to collect minerals and zip out of danger. You'll also unlock perks, character-wide bonuses that you can slot into your loadout. These also give various effects and abilities to your character. My favorite one is probably this one here. It lets you tame an enemy and have them fight for you. There are many mission types in Deep Rock. It's not all just mining minerals. Well, there's still a lot of mining, but there are challenges constantly thrown at you with all the different alien bugs you'll face. Sometimes you'll be tasked with killing an alien called a Glyphid Dreadnought, one of the handful of creatures with a life bar. As long as you work together with your team, you'll be able to kill Dreadnoughts, but they're not the only tough creature. Oh, no. There are so many other creatures that inhabit the alien planet, like this Glyphid Bulk Detonator. 
These guys are really cool because when they die, they literally leave a giant crater. There's even a variant of them that turns everything in the explosion radius to gold. And to get the most gold out of these big boys, you gotta kill them when they're in a small tunnel. It's really neat. In other missions, you'll need to dig up glowing gems called a quarks and deposit them back at a mine head. These usually have a lot of combat and are one of my favorite mission types. Even the standard mining missions are fun to me because every level is unpredictable. No two missions are the same. The two newest game modes are Escort Duty and On-Site Extraction. These were just released with Update 32 that came out last week. Escort Duty has you escorting a drill dozer, this giant tank-like drill. This is a really combat-focused game mode that can be tough if you're not prepared or if you find yourself low on ammunition. On-Site Extraction has you building oil wells and pipes, and then you'll extract what you need and escape while protecting the pump jacks. You can even skate on the pipes. It's neat. Beyond the mission types, though, are the actual environments themselves. One thing that Deep Rock does very well is environmental cues and hidden goodies that go beyond your objectives. But also, it pays to go through each cave with a fine tooth comb because of all the secrets. You can find hidden chunks of ore and treasure by looking for details on the wall. Like this here, some players might not think nothing of this, but if you dig a little bit deeper, you'll get rewarded for your curiosity. That's not all though, because there are also these special events that you could trigger by finding special machines. Some of the events that you might encounter are throwing bombs to blow up reinforced rock, charging your pickaxe to break rock covered aliens, or zapping bugs that are infected with a special mineral and then depositing that mineral. These events give you a completion bonus, but also allow you to get more cosmetic gear or an equipment modifier. The game really opens up once you get a character to level 25. At that point, you can promote your character. This will take you back down to level 1, but you'll keep all the equipment and treasure that you have. You can then also participate in deep dives, which are back-to-back-to-back -back -back missions with no rest in between. You also can't join a deep dive in progress, meaning you'll be with the same dwarves the entire time. By completing deep dives, you get these things called matrix cores. These are great because you could use them to make new modifiers for your weapon, and also unlock even more cosmetics. You could use these cores to unlock optional objectives in regular missions too. It almost seems never ending, but in a good way. You could always work towards building something new, like figuring out a new build, modifying your equipment in ways you haven't tried yet, or playing one of the other dwarves. The community in Deep Rock is so positive and accepting of new players, and that open and accepting nature almost feels built into the game. Pressing the V key will make your dwarf raise their pickaxe in the air and yell rock and stone. I love doing this. You'll see me cheering everyone on when we start a mission, when we finish a mission, or reviving somebody, any number of reasons. It's such a versatile command. It could be a greeting, a thank you, a job well done, you name it. It's not like other games where the quick chats can be kind of toxic or sarcastic. It at least feels genuine, just like many of the folks that I've played with. Now there is one caveat to Deep Rock that I need to mention, and it's kind of important. Deep Rock heavily relies on multiplayer. You can play solo, you even get a little robot named Bosco to help you, but let's be honest, this is a multiplayer oriented game. I'd say the robot is mostly there to let you learn each dwarf and how to play, and to provide a little extra help when you host a mission but folks haven't joined yet. Luckily, there are plenty of people playing right now, so I've never had any problems finding other players. Overall, I think that sums up a lot of the reasons why I've been enjoying Deep Rock Galactic so much. It reminds me of all the things I love about Monster Hunter. The team coordination, the importance of your gear, new mission types and rewards for your accomplishments. It just keeps giving. The deep dives in Matrix cores really remind me of G rank or Master Rank, because it takes some time to actually get up to level 25, and it gives you new goals to strive towards. I guess the point of all this is it's a great game and I'd love for more people to play it. I've tried to frame this video as coming from a Monster Hunter fan because Deep Rock has a lot of similarities with Monster Hunter, despite being vastly different. There is no cash shop or pointless DLC, it's a genuinely rewarding game to sink your precious time into. It doesn't hold your hand with obnoxious tutorials, it lets you experiment. There's lots of mission objectives and fun achievements, the developers are active, the community is mostly friendly and there's a very high skill ceiling. 
As of right now, I've played over 50 hours of it, and I could see myself playing it for many, many more. Anyway, that's my thoughts on Deep Rock Galactic and how it kind of relates to Monster Hunter. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know what you thought in the comments. Take care. Peace.